Hi, I'm Kate O'Hare, creator of the Pax Culturati blog at Pathios.com. Talking today about a movie called A Million Miles Away, which premiered on September 15th on Amazon Prime Video. It tells the story of a guy who started life as the son of migrant farm workers in Northern California and went on to become first an engineer and later to realize his dream of becoming a NASA astronaut and flying on the space shuttle. Now, because the actors are on strike, unfortunately, star Michael Pena is not available to talk about the film. But I did get to talk to the real guy. And by the way, I apologize in advance if I mispronounce anything because high school Spanish was a while ago. His name is Jose Hernandez. And I also got to talk to the director of the film, Alejandra Marquez Abeja. So without further ado, first up, Jose, and then Alejandra. Enjoy. So how weird is it to see your life on, in the movies? It's surreal because uh, never in your mind do you grow up thinking, I'm going to grow up and do things such that they make a movie about me. You know, that's, not, that's just something you don't grow up with. And so... So when I, you know, I grew up and wanted to become an astronaut and uh, and uh, and achieved it, that I, you know, I realized that because of how I background I came in as a first generation migrant farm worker, that uh, that it made a lot of noise in the uh, back in two thousand four when I got selected, that I became an instant role model and I embraced that and even. After I left NASA, I started giving motivational talks and wrote some books. So the next natural step is that if the story is interesting enough, which apparently some studios thought it was, then they approached me and said, hey, you know, we read your books and we think it's worthy of a story. And because I'm into motivating people, I saw this as an opportunity to motivate hundreds of millions of people because this movie drops on Prime Video, September 15th, um, in over 240 countries. And so that is just amazing. There's a bit the movie doesn't really delve into deeply that I was curious about, because a lot of kids, depending on your background, you're not necessarily encouraged to pursue STEM, or you're not necessarily encouraged to go to college, or there's there's roadblocks in the way, financial and otherwise, to go into college. So fill in that little gap between growing up the way you did, and then finding yourself in college as a math well, and engineering guy. Sure, sure. Well, it it's just so happens that um, because I was a migrant farm worker and we moved three different school districts throughout the year in the early part yeah. of my uh, elementary education, elementary school education, was that it took me a while to it took me a while to consider myself truly bilingual in, in terms of knowing the English language. However, though, however, uh, you know, two plus three was five in any language. And so my refuge was math and science. And so when the dream was conceived as a 10-year-old watching astronaut Gene Cernan, the very last man walk on the moon, when uh, when my dream of becoming an astronaut was conceived as a 10-year-old, I was kind of set up naturally already Because, you know, you have to have a STEM career. And Mm -hmm. that was my strength. Because of my language barrier, I was good in math. I was good in science. And I said, great, this is going to work out. I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be a scientist. I'm going to be an engineer. And so it kind of worked out, uh, you know, uh, I'm glad I didn't see a poet or a a literary genius on TV because then, that's when I would have probably struggled a lot because I said, wait, you hardly know English. How are you going to do this? But oh, I'm math, just the opposite. I'm good yeah. at language and I'm math, fairly math, bad felt, at math. Exactly. Math, I felt very comfortable. I think, though, I think, you know, you get one or the other often in life. You get like the language facility or you get the math facility. And it yes. seems like you got the math pretty, pretty well. Yes, yes. Didn't do too bad in English, too, because I wrote, you know, my own well, book. Yeah. You know, reach, reaching for the stars. There was no ghostwriter. I'm very proud of the fact that awesome. you know, they, say, they say engineers can't write, and I say, well, wait, wait till you see me write my own book. And so you're like mind. a you're like a double threat. <laughs> there you go. So uh, I know there's a lot of talk also, like 
depending where you're from, like if you're from a small town or you're from a migrant background or whatever background you're from, when you move into uh, the world you didn't grow up in, whatever world you grew up in, you move into that different world and you don't want to lose touch with your upbringing, but you want to be able to succeed in the new place where you are. And I think there was an announcement, whatever. So um, how do you balance that? How did you manage to walk in two worlds? Because it seems in the movie that that you did that successfully. Yes, yes. There's a certain amount of assimilation you take, right? Uh, but uh, at the same time, you uh, you grew up in a bicultural environment. Mm. And so uh, so the way I grew up is I embraced both cultures. And I said, look, I'm going to take the best of both cultures. And that's what's going to identify me, Jose, as a person. And I think that's the way I took it. I didn't say, oh, I'm going to turn back on this culture and just focus on this culture because I there was very beautiful things in my culture. And then there were also good things in, uh, in, in the American culture. And so, you know, the two worlds merge. They didn't collapse or collide. I think it's more of an easy merge that I did. And uh, that's what defined who you see today. Today, there's a lot of talk about encouraging girls to go into STEM. But uh, talk a little bit about encouraging boys, because these days, I think we sort of assume that boys will be fine. And I don't think they're always fine. So what do you want to say to young boys who I, might I, want to follow in your footsteps? I would tell young boys and girls alike that we need more scientists. We need more engineers. Don't be afraid of the math and science because uh, it comes, it'll come and it'll click. And all of a sudden you're going to say, I get this. So give it a shot. Give it a consideration because our country needs more scientists and engineers. You know, we got India and China breathing down our back with respect to uh, to technological superiority. And we mm -hmm. need to stay on top because that's what keeps our country moving forward. And But we need more engineers. So I got a bit of time left. So tell me what was the favorite part about being in space? Uh, the favorite part is floating continuously <laughs> and uh, and looking out the window because you're traveling uh, once every 90 minutes around the world. So you can be looking out the window one minute and you're over in North America and then you go off and do a shore for you know a job for 15, 20 minutes, you come out and you're over Australia or you're over Europe or you're over wow. Africa. And it's just amazing. You over China, you know, it's just amazing because you get to see every country uh, uh, as you orbit around. And I got to orbit around the world 217 times because wow. you're out there 14 days and you go around the world once every 90 minutes. So I got a good view of our world. Well, I'm a space geek, so I'm officially envious of you. <laughs> no, Better than a bird's eye view. Yes, yes. But, you know, there's commercial folks out there that will take you to space. So, hey. I've heard that. William no. Shatner went. Come on. He went. Yeah, exactly. He's like 90 some years old. And he was able to go. Exactly. And he was able to go. So you never know what's going to happen. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. My pleasure. Take care. Oh. Hi, what is the thing you wanted most to make sure you got across in this movie? I think the idea of community, I think that's an important message that the world needs today. And I, I think that's a very Latino, Hispanic trait that I wanted to elevate in the film. And, and yeah, it was a... It was an easy thing to do with, with Jose and Jose's story. It had it, it was there already. Yeah, I went to see um, Oppenheimer at the movies, and here you have a very famous scientist who probably comes from a dysfunctional background, has real trouble with relationships. And then you have Jose, who's got a wife and kids and a family he loves. And it was just really refreshing to see that to be a scientist, you don't yeah. have to be entirely dysfunctional. It's not a requirement. <laughs> I know, just five kids. Yeah, <laughs> which is great. That's, that's the dysfunctional <laughs> part of it. Well, it's, it's the good way. It's good version yeah. of dysfunctional.
What what struck you about Jose's story when you were first introduced to it? The, I think it was the um, apparent contradiction between the words migrant farm worker astronaut. You know that by itself is a is a whole story. It's a it was an interesting set of words, and I and I was drawn to it immediately. You know, a lot of kids from a variety of backgrounds, whether it's a migrant farm worker, whether they're living in some small farm town somewhere up in Alaska or wherever, whatever their the inner city, whatever their circumstances, a lot of times their environment doesn't encourage them to head in directions like this. So what was it about Jose, do you think, that just gave him the engine to keep going? I think it was uh, it was several elements but i would say the main thing well the main one would was his father his father his father's work ethic and his father you know coming to him telling that telling that recipe to him i think that and the work ethic that the field and you know putting food in people's tables uh, that as a constant exercise of humility and you know Gratitude, I think, I think that that made him and that gave everything that he needed later on. What was your big biggest challenge in putting this production together? Because like you're out in the fields, you're underwater, you're up in space, you're, you know, you're, you're all over the place in this movie. Well, I guess fitting a whole life experience in two hours was a challenge that that was for once. And then recreating NASA. We shot the whole film in Mexico and we had to not only recreate NASA, but recreate Houston and Northern California and then, you know, Florida. So it was, it was challenging to not miss any detail, to not, you know, but I guess, yeah, the training scenes, the training scenes were tough because they had to be accurate. We, Mm -hmm. We couldn't, mislead, you know, anything. And that, that was a challenge, but it was fun as well. You know, as a, lot of challenges are. <laughs> a lot of filmmakers flinch when they see there's water involved. So we have these <laughs> scenes where Jose's training and they're underwater pretending to be in space. So what was the challenge creating that just as a director? Well, you have to not recreate, but actually shoot a military training. So, you know, you can't lower like the safety on it, you can't mm-hmm. lower the, I mean, you fake it a little bit, but the, the thing is happening, you know, that, that thing is going into the water and the scuba divers have to be there. They have to act, but they have to be. Uh, they're really there, not CGI. Yeah. No, 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 they're there and they have to take care of, you know, the actors and themselves, but they're on screen. So it's a, like a meta thing, you know, you're doing the actual thing, but you're, faking the thing at the same time. So that, that was like confusing. We had to be very clear on the type of signs they had to do, you know, and, and everything because it was confusing. Do, do you feel confident to go out there and do a movie on a boat or something now? Oh, I must say, a boat? Oof. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was thinking Master and Commander shot a lot in Mexico and it was it was not easy. No, I can't oh. imagine. If you have that time and the right crew, I think everything is achievable. I mean, you're going to suffer, but you're going to make it. So, What was the thing that you personally loved best about this story? I, I think, I mean, in my experience was I came to this film because I was invited and I had to pitch, you know, I had to win the, mm-hmm. the job. And I was, I was not expecting to get it. I wasn't, you know, super confident about getting it. But finding in the own material the tools to be, you know, like that confident and, and just go into the, the um, you know, cross the doors to the offices that I had to go, like, thinking about Jose and how he did the same with yeah. Nasa. So I was like, well, no, if he wasn't nervous about it, why would, why would I, 
you know, ruin it for me. O sea, I have to be, I have to do the same. I have to emulate what he, what, what he did. So important to have people as inspiration. Just like if, if that person did it, I can do it. Yeah, and luckily that was the material which was on the center of the, my, my work. So, you know, I was lucky. Tell me about your leading man. The most amazing actor in the world. <laughs> the most hardworking, funny, the best human being. Yeah, he, he was a very nice uh, experience for me with an actor. That it was like the best. He was super hardworking. In the little bit of time we have left, um, what did you take away from doing this job? Well, as I was saying, I, I think I, I am more, more confident right now. I think, yeah, I, I, it made me think that anything I can, I can project or that, that I can imagine to happen to myself is in me, is because of how I look, my origins, uh, my life story. It's not despised of it. I think that's, that's what I took from Jose's story and it's going to, Stay with me. Maybe next we'll do a science fiction epic. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.